<clears throat> All right, so um, we're going to give a few of you uh, time to get on. I know that this is um, this was not really announced, so to speak, and so um, we'll give several of you time to kind of get on board and and um, you know and, and check in. You can take notes. You can um, you can grab your Bibles if you like. Uh, we probably won't be doing a lot of uh, scripture quoting tonight because we just kind of really want to start a discussion. So, um, and I'll say this again, but this is Chris Dow, uh, I'm Tony. And so what we're doing is um, we're kind of combining two different release um, outlets. Um, we're connecting hooded messages with sword and prayer um, and just kind of trying to talk with both audiences using this particular platform. Uh, see David Brown is here uh, DJ what's up man um, we're going to this is going to be a pretty serious topic as a matter of fact we're going to talk about some things that you may not be hearing a lot about uh, you may it, it just depends on how much research you've been doing yourself uh, but we're going to we're going to we're going to talk about some pretty serious topics um, and we're going to we're going to hopefully flow in the mercy of God so that you can hear his voice in this, not necessarily get caught up in a bunch of information. That's not our goal tonight, but to just really share some what we feel is, are some important tools. Um, right before we start, I'll let Chris also address sort and prayer groups since we're combining the two and let him kind of talk about what we're doing and, and who we are. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to say good evening to you all, or good morning, depending on where you all are chiming in from. Um, so I want to say uh, Shabbat Shalom uh, to all of our friends and yeah, family, Shabbat those Shalom. of you that are watching. I want to also say share, share, share. Share this uh, platform tonight on your page, and uh, hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. And so to all of you, sword and player uh, that you all have been following, I actually did uh, a part one on this already, but I went back and retitled it part two because I wanted to do a part one a little bit more formal and uh, a little bit more strategic and really touch on some things of the heart of God before I actually get into the actual, I guess you would say nuts and bolts of things. So uh, me and Tony was actually talking today and it kind of sparked something and so I told him I wanted him to kind of go a little bit into what he was sharing in the car as well uh, as we get into this discussion on tonight. So, uh, but again, welcome you all and share again uh, with your page and, and hopefully we'll say some things tonight to give you strength and courage and uh, give you some uh, things that you can look at from uh, maybe even from a biblical perspective uh, about what's going on around us. And so we'll have God's eye and God's perspective on everything. All right? All right, so um, I guess we'll preference this by saying um, this this whole season has been, um, you know, has, has been a challenge for many of our families and, and our friends. And so... What we want to do is make sure that we we stay in the in the in the vein of what God is saying, so that we um, we can be good stewards uh, of the of the affairs of the kingdom in terms of uh, what we release, how we release those things, resources, and all those things, because we want to model what what the what the way of the Lord is in this particular time. And so we have a lot of questions. People are, are asking, people are uh, searching the internet and things like that, um, trying to get answers. And some of the answers are still pretty, pretty blurred. And, and um, you know, and, and there's a lot of things that's still not really clear. And so we're still not sure what this is and what's happening. Um, and just to bring you up to speed just a little bit, and I know everybody is, is somehow aware of what I'm about to say. So, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to make this statement as if this is an accurate statement. I'm saying this is what we heard uh, when all these things happened. So um, somewhere around December of 2019, it was active 5780 already on, on the uh, on the hip code. But um, somewhere somewhere at the, at, in December 2019, this thing that we're calling um, COVID-19 coronavirus, so there's two different names in it, and, and that's, there's purpose for that, but the coronavirus outbreak is believed to have uh, begun around December 2019. We're, it, we were told it started in Wuhan, China. Mm -hmm. um, 
And since then, it has expanded to touch nearly uh, every corner of the globe. Uh, many people are sick and there's been some fatalities. Um, and so there are, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are affected by this outbreak. As a matter of fact, it was, um, it was projected that, um, that at least one third of the, of the world's population at the end of this would be impacted by this particular virus. Not necessarily that one third, so we want to be clear as to what we're hearing, not necessarily one third of the population would die from this, neither would one third be sick from it, but one third would be impacted by the coronavirus, by COVID-19. Um, that number got my attention and that's what started me to kind of looking at it um, through what I look at everything else and that is the lens of the scripture. So let me preference what we're going to be talking about tonight um, with this statement. This is a this is a battle, an epic battle. It's 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 a young battle in that it's it's really at the beginning stages of what we're going to see later down the road. But this is an epic battle to control the narrative, right? Um, when we talk about narrative, a narrative is a spoken or written account. Um, of connected events or a story, so to speak. A narrative shapes history. So there is this obsession from the world that we live in, from the, um, every, from, from, um, from the government to, um, to Hollywood, to the sports arena, to your everyday common person. We are fighting and we are obsessed over controlling the narrative. From, from all your different right movements um, to your, um, you know, uh, to, to your individuals who are fighting for some level of freedom, um, there, is, there is this obsession with controlling the narrative. Mm -hmm. So 2 Timothy says this, and I'm going to paraphrase on purpose, right? Because I want to show you what, what I actually received from this message. And then I want to get into probing Chris about some of the things that the Lord has actually shown him. So in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul is given wisdom to Timothy. He's, the, Timothy is considered by many to be one of Paul's spiritual sons, as we would use in today's language. But he was someone under the influence of, of Paul. So Paul says to Timothy, he says, I want you to understand something. You need to know this, that in the last days, and he wasn't necessarily just talking to the time that, that he and Timothy was looking at. Paul was looking further than even that moment. There were some things going on there in that day, but looking beyond that moment, Paul says, I want you to know that in the last days, perilous times will come. The word perilous just simply means dangerous times, times that will put lives at risk, times that will cause fatalities at numbers that we're that that would just blow our minds, phenomenal numbers. And he says, you need to know that this is going to exist. But this is the reason that he says it is. And he gives a list and you can go read that list. He says, you know, proud people, men are going to be proud, boasters, heady, high-minded, lovers of sales, well, lovers of God, you know, disobedient to parents, so on and so forth. But if you put all that together, what you get is an ingredient for the highest level of toxicity dealing with narcissism that you'll probably ever know in your lifetime, Right at least up until this point. It will get worse later because the Bible said it would. So what happens is this narcissistic attitude, behavior, approach to life becomes so toxic that it begins to shape the world that we live in or it attempts to shape the world, shape the narrative. What we're saying to you is no one individual outside of God himself can reshape the narrative, the story that he's already told. The lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. So the narrative was told way before you or I even had access to what we call written material. We're, we are to understand the narrative, to read, to know, and to become acquainted with the narrative. 
when we do that, then what happens in the earth beyond that or inside of that is something that doesn't shock us because we are aware that that narrative exists. We've read the narrative. We understand the parties, the roles that people play. We know who, who's on stage at what time, what season is this person elevated to the stage? What, what, when does this person come on stage? What signs, what seasons do, do it say the, these individuals will come on? So the information we're going to share with you tonight is, is within the narrative, right? And so we, don't, we didn't necessarily have to go to um, the, uh, the, the resources in the earth realm in terms of the journalism that's taking place. We didn't have to go to conspirators and we didn't have to tap deep into conspiracy theories. We didn't have to wait on the next release or press release from the White House or from the government. We didn't have to wait on in, on hate groups and individuals that are formulating their own um, thoughts. We didn't have to wait on the today's pontificators, those who who um, who preach their opinions. We didn't we didn't need any of that because the Bible is very clear on the narrative, and believe it or not. God controls the narrative. So what we're about to introduce or share with you is within that narrative, and that's the way we want you to understand it. So the goal tonight is to provide some insight into the question, what in the world is going on, right? Um, and that's where we want to start this conversation. So Chris, you've done some, some study and some research. You've been in the presence of God concerning this topic of what in the world is going on. Um, one of the things that I saw in your outline, and we'll just talk about your outline for a second. You talked about the powers through which the world is and will be ruled. And ultimately, those powers, those, those uh, four deals that you gave, those four areas of power and authority, they're going to be replaced. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that because I want to give you sort of like the end of the story so you'll understand and you'll stay with us as we walk through some of the creepy areas of the story. Those, those four areas, and we'll talk about that number four later, but those four areas of, 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 uh, of authority and power are at some point going to be replaced by the kingdom of Yeshua. And he's going to purify those branches of authority. So you cite the number four as being significant to putting forth this revelation. But first, let's talk about those powers through which you say the world will be ruled. Talk a little bit about how you how you see that. Um, well, first of all, thank you for um, being on this platform again and just sharing this information. Um, one of the things that we know from the narrative of what, let's look at it the way God himself has set it up. Um, he had made Adam, first of all, to rule or to govern the world. And so from Adam's perspective, and even the aspect of having a relationship with God. So mm -hmm. that, that's two aspects right there. And in the sense of God wanted a government that will rule and, and rule from his perspective as kings. Mm -hmm. And then there is a priest side as relates to, we would say, religion mm -hmm. or just say church, okay. uh, to have that intimate fellowship with God. And these are two powerful pieces, mm -hmm. what we even call, you know, the seven mountains. So th those are two of them. Okay. And then the third one would be what we consider to be economics uh, or finances, how, how we barter, how we move money. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one would be I call the fourth one, and I think this is very important, is the X factor. I call mm -hmm. it the X factor. And the X factor to what really will dominate the world and helping these other three mm -hmm. to be very vital, and that is technology. Yeah. Uh, and we know technology is taking, has, every, uh, shucks, I guess um, it's probably been a good... 20 maybe 30 years mm -hmm. but especially in the in this century that we're in right now uh what well, decade that we're in right now i said century but decade that we're in right now we've seen technology take off especially in since 2000 mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, when they said uh, we're gonna have this two two thousand glitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but from there and and forward, we've seen an advancement, okay. and so technology is gonna help promote these other three. But technology is gonna be the key, okay. and um, so that's what I uh, see as those four pieces mm-hmm. uh, to rule the world. And then of course uh, the two. Kings that we would say false prophet sure. and the Antichrist, mm-hmm. of course, will come and actually use those systems to to rule the world. When we when we talk about and and, <clears throat> and and if you if you have problems hearing us or if there are any issues or whatever, just kind of tap it on the screen and and we'll get to it and we'll try to clear those up since we're talking about technology and it's not perfect, right? When we talk about those four areas, let's 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 go there for a second. So. It's kind of hard for people to believe that that there is a arterial motive right mm-hmm. behind government behind um, what happens in our economy. Um, people, even with technology, because we we've come to rely on it so much, is such a major part of what we do. I like the fact that you called it the X factor mm-hmm. because it's become it's, it really right. is the X factor. It's really important that we have technology. As a matter of fact, the way our world has shifted without technology, a lot of things that we're doing, even in our work environment, we wouldn't be able to do those things. But let's talk about that for a second. So people have a hard time believing Mm -hmm. that we have a body of people that are responsible for governing our land, our, our affairs, that could somehow be influenced by some level of darkness. Mm -hmm. That somehow there is a demonized system in place. Um, People have a hard time believing that because we want to believe the good in everybody. Mm -hmm. What is it that what is it that sets these governments up for the things that we're going to see come into place, like the things that we talk about in the book of Revelation, Daniel's, all these things. Mm-hmm. What's driving mm-hmm. this, uh, these, this governmental power, or this authority? What's driving that? What's bringing the government to act on particular things, behave particular ways that are not necessarily aligned with God's laws? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say this. Now, this, this may shock a lot of people, I'm going to say God for number one. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's just look at, again, let's go back to Genesis because God always shows us the end Mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so if we can catch the narrative, which is what you've been laying out to us, Mm -hmm. if we can catch that narrative of how, just look at Nimrod, uh, Babylon, um, and of course, even when we get into the book of Revelation, yes. we come back to Babylon mm-hmm. uh, again, that beginning stage. And so what was driving him? If you if you find out what was driving him, mm-hmm. because that same system has been running throughout history. Yes. So that's why you even saying that really we're not caught off guard. Yeah. It's just the same show, mm-hmm. different people yes. at a different time frame. Yes. And so the, the spirit is the old serpent, as the Bible says, that whole serpent called the devil. Yes. Um, and so, and again, we know God is the ultimate one that's bringing about this narrative. Now, why is this got to be? And again, let's go back to Genesis. Mm-hmm. When Adam and Eve uh, fell for the deception mm-hmm. uh, of Lucifer mm-hmm. or Satan at that time, or the serpent at that time, God had already issued a decree Mm. that her seed and his seed Mm -hmm. would always be clashing. And so we see a seed of men, Mm -hmm. a seed of men who are governed by the seed of the deceiver that is pushing a narrative that God has already put in place. Mm -hmm. So they're only fulfilling... Mm -hmm what he's already established Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for him to come through Yahshua to reestablish the true government of God. Mm -hmm. And so he did that even with the cross and and giving us back dominion Mm -hmm. in the sense of ruling uh, from our mouth, Mm -hmm. ruling from our authority Mm -hmm. and what we will say. 
And so, and then helping us to now get back in position to where we can actually physically start getting into some uh, some of these areas. If yeah. we're really going to begin to take control, mm -hmm. the people of God have to has to get back in some of these areas in a physical way. Mm -hmm. And so, to some degree, that is being hindered because, again, the enemy is, is shutting out. And, and part of what we're seeing right now mm -hmm. is we can't meet. Right. Uh, we can't come together as a, as a collective body. Mm -hmm. And even there are some uh, words that are being put out there right now that we might not ever be ready to come back mm -hmm. to meet unless other things are put in place. Sure to make sure we are clean or sure, pure sure. enough to be amongst one another. Yes. Um, so I like that. I like that. When, when I, when I think about, so, um, when you think about government, right. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and there being the, uh, potential of, um, evil, mm -hmm. um, or there being, the, the, there being the potential of a dark influence in our government or, or flowing through our government. It sometimes when we think about that, it, we feel like then that gives us a right mm -hmm. to rebel against government mm -hmm. because there is something evil about it, right? Um, almost as if we're saying anything that we find evil in, we no longer have to obey, follow, flow, whatever with that with that particular entity. Well, then that would canceled out most of our jobs and right. that would <laughs> right right we wouldn't be buying anything because right. a lot of our products mm -hmm. are coming from individuals who back dark kingdoms and things mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um but if what we're saying is accurate um then it makes sense con if we contextualize this if what we're saying is accurate that that god already god wrote this story mm -hmm. right and then he told it to us and then he lived it out. He lives it out every year and every decade and every generation. So there has always been evil people. If we're using that terminology, we could argue what evil is. But right. if we're using that, there's always been an influence that mm -hmm. was against that, that seemed like it was outside of God's influence and that it was working independent of God. Mm -hmm. And one perfect example would be the government that was in place in Egypt mm -hmm. when Yosef mm -hmm. ends up there, right? Mm -hmm. The government that was in place when Moses right. was trained in this culture that really wasn't that of his own. But all these individuals were, were taught within these government homes. Um, Esther, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's always purpose in God saying to us, obey them that have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. For they watch over your soul. He says, there is no power, there is no authority in the earth that God does it himself have something to do with. And mm -hmm. I'll paraphrase that. Because he's controlling the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Does God know that there are going to be individuals that are going to do things that are, that seem opposite of his will and his wisdom. Why did Israel cry out in Egypt on the, you know, we could easily say, well, they finally got tired of being slaves. Did they? Mm -hmm. Or, or did God allow the, uh, the oppression to create in them a right. cry right. because the time had matured mm -hmm. that he had promised to bring about the next phase of this plan. So we need to be careful about what we're, when we're going to rebel, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that there are right. not going to be times right. where we do not say, no, I, I can't do right. that. That's strictly against God's law. I almost want to cut you <laughs> off. No, you sure. should. You should because that's how we, yeah. But, uh, I, I made this comment to, the, to our church, and but God started dealing with me about something. And it's exactly what you're saying. And I told them, because at first, we we were going, we were having our services. Sure. We, the, uh, I think maybe the first time they made the decree, mm -hmm. we still went. Mm -hmm. And about 60 of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, I want to say, all of us are still whole. Yeah. No one in our church has no problem. So praise God for that. Amen. Um, but, <clears throat> and so there was something that was being heralded. Um, against the world and against Africa. 
And uh, I thought it necessary to come back to look, guys, in which <laughs> Lord did tell me mm -hmm. this is a this is a season of authority. Yes. Because we can't physically come where you are. Yes. So speak my word only. Mm -hmm. So, but he began to talk to me about, and I began to study this too. After I began to hear this, he's like, there's a time for that. Mm -hmm. This is not that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And so you need to preserve life. Yeah. Yeah. And he began to take me in Jeremiah when he was telling him, go to Babylon. Right. If you resist, yeah. you're going to die prematurely. Mm -hmm. You're going to die before. Mm -hmm. Now, see, now there's, a, there's, a, there's an aspect, again, mm -hmm. of king, yes. where kings go to battle, and you love not your life unto death. Yes, the time and then, for all things. And then there's a time of, of, of that intimate role where God, you and God are having that relationship together mm -hmm. to where, okay, it's not battle time, what I'm sure. saying. It's... it's Hiding in the secret place, mm -hmm. he's protecting you. Yes, nothing is gonna come near your dwelling. Yeah, and then there are times when you, yes, it's time for you to, it's, it's, you know, mm -hmm. you put your war clothes on and you start, you know, and so yes, there, there is very important for us to understand that there are seasons and times where we, we, we prevail. Right. Um, and I'm just, that's just what it is. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and but that's what they will look at it as. Mm -hmm. And the days are those who are actually still under God's rule mm -hmm. who have the authority right. to, as the scripture will say, when we talk about these four, mm -hmm. the scripture says they would wear out the saints. Mm -hmm. Daniel talks about they would wear out the saints mm -hmm. um, and for a time, time and half a time. And right. then, of course, in the book of Revelation, it talks about 42 months, three and a half years, 12 mm -hmm. and 60 days, mm -hmm. uh, that the enemy will have the authority and power to overrule mm -hmm. and um, overcome. And, and where does he get that authority, Chris? He get that. <laughs> he get that again from the one that's controlling the, the narrative. narrative. Mm -hmm. So this is important. What it should do, it should give us encouragement to know that even though we, we may face some oppositions, or we may face some trials, sure, or we may even face tribulation, sure. It gives us hope and to know that God is watching the whole scene. Mm -hmm. He's not, you know, cut off God That's like, right. oh, wow, I didn't know this was going to happen. He has already wrote it out. Right. And they know that it's wrote out this way. Mm -hmm. This is why they are mm -hmm. doing what <laughs> they are doing right. to fulfill right. what was written. Right. And you know what? It's almost like Judas. You can't get yes. upset with them <laughs> because they're only doing... That's I know right. they're saying some... Uh, you know some yeah. some things they're 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 planning some mm -hmm. wicked stuff, mm -hmm. but it's all about that the saints may come forth pure as gold right. and white. Daniel talks about that some who know their know their God mm -hmm. will do great, great exploits, exploits right. and those great exploits are coming through times of trials mm -hmm. and tests and mm -hmm. tri tribulation. And one of the things that I also want to say, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, sure. is that if you look at the Book of Revelation. From the beginning, Daniel, re me, uh, John mm -hmm. reveals, he says, first of all, I want y'all to know, he didn't say first, but mm -hmm. the first thing I want y'all to understand is this is the revelation yes. of Yahshua yes. HaMashiach. That's exactly. This is yeah. his revelation. Yes. This is his unveiling. Yes. It's like this is his coming out. It's his know? time. <laughs> this is his time yeah. to come out. And so one of the things that I was sharing with our church, I said, Redemption is not pretty from our perspective. <laughs> right. You know, when we're looking at it, oh, yeah, I don't, absolutely. but this is the redemption yes. process. Yes. So we have to endure yes. the redemption process. Yes. And here's another thing, and I promise you I'm going to turn it back over to you, because I had this thought just the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in my prayer closet with this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, God, I'm, like, I'm wrestling with this. Right. And I'm like, why do we have to go through this? Yes. I'm, I'm as I said, now this is our, my conversation with the yeah. Lord. And, and I want y'all to hear this. Lord, you've already died. Mm -hmm. You've already took on the stripes. You've already been beaten. Why do we have to go through this type of purity? Yes. I've already, I already yeah. believe you. Mm -hmm. I'm already, I've, I've already recept, I mean, accepted you. Mm -hmm. I love you, you know. <laughs> um, why this? Why this? <laughs> and of course, 
the Lord would always say, you know, this is the time of purification. This sure. is the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes. You know, things that he's already read. This yes. is this is what we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. This is my redemption process. Yes. And it's um, so in that process, God is, is showing us, first of all, that it has to be because I got to cleanse the earth mm -hmm. and I have to allow sin to come to. It's almost like I'm going to put, you know, the Bible talks about he's going to uh, burn with fire, right? Yes. So it's like, this is my part. My fire starts like this. Mm -hmm. And that all the stuff that don't supposed to be there, right. everything that can be shaken is going It'll to be, be shaken. shaken. Yes. And since you're living during this time, first of all, I trust you. Yes. The Lord, I trust you yes. that yes. this is the generation that I can allow things to happen mm -hmm. and you're not going to fold. Right. You're not going to give in. Right. You're going to stay strong. Right. And I, and I need people. Here's the thing. Here's, mm -hmm. here's the underlying thing. Mm -hmm. Because there will be people who will be crying out that need people who are strong oh, in the yeah. Lord. Oh, yeah. That because of that shaking, because of the things that we see, we already see it. We see people praying, mm -hmm. see people, police officers yeah. praying. We've seen people on their jobs yeah. praying. We see the nurses on top Absolutely. of the roof praying. Absolutely. We see people in the street, the church in mm -hmm. the street. We, I mean, it's just amazing. Right. And this is one of the things, and I don't want to get off subject, mm -hmm. but this is one of the things that I believe I talked about and you talked about mm -hmm. what I call it was the global upper, upper room yeah. experience yeah. where everybody yes. is coming out and they're crying out to God because of the pressure That's that correct. we may be feeling. But in order for us to get the oil, mm -hmm. you have to be pressed. That's correct. In order for us to get the wheat, yes. the wheat had to go on the threshing floor. Yes. In order for us to get the wine yes. out of the grape, it has to be on the threshing floor. Mm -hmm. All right. So part of what we're seeing is getting what he knows is yes. in us out of us. Yes. And sometimes we have to go through yeah. the pressing, the beating, as the song yeah. might say, or the, the kingdom suffered violent and yes. the violent take it by yes. force type of thing. And so um, if we don't get discouraged in that battle plan of mm -hmm. God at mm -hmm. the end, mm -hmm. um, we will come out as pure gold. Yes, we will. And so that's why let's, the fire is going to be. Here. Let's go back to uh, what Chris was saying about. Um, the pressing and the oil and the people praying because we are seeing a lot of uh, mm -hmm. prayer groups. I'm constantly seeing new prayer groups mm -hmm. develop, and we're and we're totally excited about that because we know what prayer can lead to. Let me tell you what I'm not seeing in that, um, and and we're going to see that before this is over. Believe me, um, because that's the in, that's the intent. When mm -hmm. God gets involved, um, there's purpose, and He's driving us somewhere. So, and we'll, because I want to get back here because Chris has some things I want to bring out before we close this out. One of the things that I'm not seeing just yet, even though we're praying and, and we have people on the front line battling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with this COVID-19 deal. And thank you for all of you guys that are putting your lives Amen. at risk to take Amen. care of others. What I'm not seeing is Teshuvah, mm -hmm. right? And... According to the scriptures, the pattern goes like this. If a plague or, or pestilence or um, judgment or uh, a refining process starts in the earth or a purification process starts in the earth, if it comes and the people are under the, the oppression of the afflicted by these things, he says, even though to some degree my judgment will be in that, he says the way to turn that, he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and here's the really important. So I think there is some humility starting to take place, and it's not even that's not really where it's going to be when this is over. Right. But we're starting to see ounces of humility start to surface in some of now. Some people are leveraging this, right? Um, they they are they are still they are still trying to hold on to what they had before this season start, hoping to go back to it, and 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 that's not going to happen because this is a new norm, as we call it, for everybody. But let's just go there. What I'm seeing is an ounce of humility. 
So there is the beginning stages of seeking the face of the Lord. But when that humility becomes more pure than what it is, and when there is a more sincere intent as we start seeking after the Lord, I think the very next thing, the net, very next wave will be a wave of teshuvah, a wave of repentance, a wave of turning from and turning to. Now, that's what I'm not seeing a lot of, right? So right now, the, the, the world seems, the globalization, it seems like we're coming together. It seems like we're joining forces. It seems like people are dropping their religious flags and coming under one body, one headship. And it seems that way, but the true sign of that is when his people, and I'm not necessarily talking about anybody else, when his people humble themselves enough to start truly seeking his face, turning from our twisted ways or that that we've allowed to be mixed in our lives. So that that's influencing us when we decide that we're going to turn from, from those influences and we're going to give ourselves to the plan of Yah. I think that's when we'll start to see a whole different level of healing. Not the healing that we want in terms of just remove COVID-19. Right. So people can stop dying. So people can stop getting sick. So I can stop being afraid to go to Walmart. So I can be free to get back into the shopping network. So I can go on, on the boat. So that I can get back into my gambling stuff. So that I can be able to hit the clubs again. As long as that is there... That's not true healing. So even if they lift the bands and lift the restrictions, it doesn't necessarily mean that healing has taken place because healing is not about removing a disease of the flesh. Healing is about healing a condition of the soul, a condition of the heart, a condition of the spirit, a condition of the mind. And so until there is a teshuva, until there is a turning from and a turning to, then we're not truly going to see a, 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 a wholeness sweeping the earth to where people are complete enough to stand up to whatever is coming next, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So God will do whatever he needs to do in order to get us there. You know, when people talk about Pharaoh hardening his heart every time a plague would come because his magicians could re could um could recreate the same plague right it's something about mimicking stuff mirroring things so moses would 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 uh, stretch out the rod something would happen plague would break out and then pharaoh's guys would come and do the same thing it's it's like a virus come and we create the same virus mm -hmm. and put it back in your system and heal you. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, we're good. We can do the same thing, right? We can do what he can do. We can repeat that. Not to say that God brought COVID-19. I'm just giving you an illustration. It seems as long as we feel that we are controlling the narrative, we don't see a reason to make teshuva, to turn and come back. But if we understand where this narrative is going, and that's why I want to take Chris to the next question. When we, if we understand where this narrative is going and what more we're going to be seeing, I think it gives us more insight to what his plan is for us. When we see this happening, what should we be doing? So, you, so we talked about the government, the economy a little bit, but I want to move on because I want to hit some of these other points. Um, you talk about the X factor, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, digitalization and how that ties into the X factor. You describe this as being associated with or leading to the infamous mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Talk about this X factor and a little bit about this, this digitalization. We won't spend much time there because I, I, I do want to get to, there's something here that I really want us to talk about before we leave today, tonight. But talk a little bit about that X factor and that digitalization. Okay, um... 
Let me let me let me talk about this from a dream first, um, so people will know that I'm not just you know shooting off the hip or mm-hmm. going on study. Mm-hmm. This is something that I actually dreamed. The Lord gave me four dreams, four. Now they wasn't dealing necessarily. I thought from the beginning stages of digital uh, digitalization mm-hmm. was when I saw the dream. It was, it was dealing with me and God. If you, if you all have had dreams before, you kind of know how God works with you if you're familiar with dreams. Sometimes he can be dealing with you personally and then at the same time dealing with situations, uh, uh, events that's going to come. And so that's how it was with me. He was dealing with me personally being late, being late. And I kind of shared th- at least three of those dreams with you. Mm-hmm. I felt like the Lord was waking me up. In the dream, I kept seeing five 40 something. It was always 540, 543, 545, 548. And every time I saw it, I always saw it in digital. Okay. I was, uh, uh, the first time I had the dream, I was late for prayer. In the dream, I was mm-hmm. late for prayer. And we actually had prayer that morning, mm-hmm. but I woke up, had plenty of time. Uh, the second dream, I was late taking my son, uh, waking my son up for school. Had uh, plenty of time once I woke up. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the second one was, the third one was my father, still digital time. Digital my time. father is a person that's always on time. I'm talking about he's ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And so I know the Lord was dealing with me about time. Okay. Uh, and that, <clears throat> and the last one I had, I saw a vision of, I was looking in the sky and I prayed about something right before I went to sleep. Mm-hmm. And it was about uh, this meteor or asteroid that's supposed to come into the Earth orbit um, uh, around about 2029. 20, okay. um, so, but anyway, I saw a digital. I, I didn't see all the time. I'm seeing a time, mm-hmm. but I don't see a clock with hands. Okay. It was always digital time. Mm-hmm. So, the fourth dream, I'm like, all of a sudden, I just asked God, "What is it that every time I see time, it's mm-hmm. digital?" Mm-hmm. And the Lord just so suddenly, I mean, I just, I sense this even as I'm talking to Mm -hmm. you all. He just so subtly said, you're going into a digital era. Mm -hmm. You won't see hand, you know, the way you would look on the clock. Right. And of course, we we still use that. But he was saying to me, I'm telling you, this is digital era that you're entering into or that you're already in. And so that means everything will be digital. Ties. Sure. Everything, sure. your money, your house, mm-hmm. your car, everything is going in that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I began to notice that and he really brought that out, I'm like, oh, my goodness. And then he, he brought up uh, the aspect of 5G. And uh, with the 5G, I didn't really know all the ends out of, of 5G. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so... I did some research on it mm-hmm. and come to find out that that's, that's probably the undercurrent, you know, that, you know, like sometimes you can go over, uh, take a bridge uh-huh. and you're going over water. Yes. But under the bridge is water. There's an undercurrent there. Um, and I don't know if that's a good example, but, sure. uh, but when we, I just say the Corona is what we see, mm-hmm. right? For us. Okay. We see that. Mm-hmm. We see that. We see it. It's, that it's, Coming at us, you know, every time we wake up, we cut the TV on. Bam, it's right there, right, right there, right there. It's the surface. And, but under that mm. is this 5G. You hear, you're starting to hear more conversation of 5G Corona, 5G mm. Corona, Corona mm. 5G. Mm. And so what you come to find out is that there are a lot of things are happening to push forward the 5G because mm. they need the 5G uh, in connection with all the other things as it relates to the technology that they need to help to actually bring about identity, mm-hmm. to bring about um, control, mm-hmm. uh, to be able to scan, mm-hmm. uh, to be able to uh, keep up with you, so mm-hmm. to speak, to to monitor your activity, and they need this type of technology in connection to AI, artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. So that all of this and need this algorithm type thing or these rhythms. Mm-hmm. And so just like, you know, we're talking on on Facebook right now, mm-hmm. you know, it's projecting a picture, but that picture before it hits Facebook is digital. It's numbers. Okay. Gotcha. 
And so these, bam, and then they give us this picture. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just started talking to me about this actually two days ago, maybe even this morning, within within the next, you know, last uh, couple of days mm -hmm. about this aspect of uh, this digitalization and the aspect of the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the word that nobody really wants to talk about. Sure. Oh, wait, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you know, but that's where this is going. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you all, <clears throat> uh, as that time comes upon us, um, more more swiftly than not, and, mm -hmm. and, and so here's another dream. Mm -hmm. I had a dream. All this is happening this year. Mm -hmm. So this these dreams are 2020 dreams. Gotcha. Um, so I was asleep, and in my dream, I'm seeing, it's like I'm seeing things fly by quickly. It's almost like you're riding a motorcycle. Right. And you, you're really getting on it. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the trees and the cars, yeah, everything is moving right. quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. So I heard three words in the dream. Quickly, movement, uh, and um, activity. Yes. Those three words. Mm -hmm. Movement, activity, quickly. And so when I heard those three words, I noticed in the dream, I couldn't really put my eye on it because mm -hmm. everything was so moving so rapidly, so swiftly. Right. I couldn't pinpoint it. Right. You know, couldn't detail it out because it was moving so quickly. Mm -hmm. And after that, I saw an eagle. This eagle just came in. And so I'm like, oh, wow. Um, and so I thought, woke up, mm -hmm. the Lord talked to me about coming out of Egypt on eagle's mm -hmm. wings. And he took me to Revelation chapter 12. Mm. Out of all the scriptures that deals with eagles. Mm -hmm. And so what he was saying was, is that things are happening very quickly. Sure. So quickly that you may not be able to put your hand or be able to see it clearly with your eyes mm -hmm. before it's just, bam, it's there. Absolutely. It's on you. Absolutely. And he says, but I'm the eagle. Mm -hmm. As quickly as those things are happening, mm -hmm. As quickly as mm -hmm. things are moving mm -hmm. and the activity that we're seeing, I'm going to be the eagle Absolutely. that bring you out on eagle's mm -hmm. wings. And, uh, just, and, That's uh, beautiful. and then um, mm -hmm. that um, Revelation 12 mm -hmm. is where, of mm -hmm. course, he says yeah. he takes them into the wilderness mm -hmm. and there is a place prepared mm -hmm. for them. So I'm saying that to say this is not something that I'm just, you know, again, shooting sure. off the hip. These are things that the Lord has actually said sure. that we're going in digital. Mm -hmm. uh, and why would he say Revelation 12, where it also talks about three and a half years? Mm -hmm. uh, and we know there's a three and a half year process. Now, people, of course, talk about seven, but Correct. we'll talk about that three uh, half, yeah. maybe another time. Mm -hmm. But we definitely know what the book of Revelation is mainly screaming Three and a half, three and a half, Correct. three and a half. Correct. So that's kind of how mm -hmm. I look at the digital digitization and how that's connected to your name, mm -hmm. um, uh, your identity, and, you know, the mark of the beast. Sure. I, I guess I don't know if you want to go farther into that. Or yeah, not. so one of the things that I, I wanted Chris to hit that because I, I think we here's something we need to understand. Through globalization and the people... Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think people really get that, and so globalization um, put us in one community. Mm -hmm. It made everything accessible uh, across the globe, mm -hmm. and so when things happen now, they don't happen isolated to a community. Matter of fact, that's what two K was about. That's what two K was what about. Two, globalizing everything, yes. giving that open source, open borders, so to yes, speak. yes, mm -hmm. and so. Now there is it, it. It makes it easier for things that we've seen in prophecy, <laughs> but didn't really see how it would ever mm -hmm. be come. able to come into fruition. But but now today, because of globalization, we can see where things can happen overnight. Right. Um, it's almost like COVID nineteen started one night in twenty nineteen in December, and all of a mm -hmm. sudden, right, across the world. Now it could have been in a lab longer, but but we saw it in twenty nineteen. But what we what we understand is this, is that now things can move rapidly. Mm -hmm. What are we saying to you, though? The mercy of God, right, has has given us the story, the narrative through the mercies of God. He has laid out the entire narrative, the entire story 
and how everything is connected is right here in the Torah, in the Bible, in the Word of God. What happens a lot of time is that we wait too late to pick up our Bibles. Mm -hmm. We wait too late to hear from God, to ask the difficult questions that need to be asked of God. We find ourselves dependent upon a source or different sources that are not to be trusted in times like these or any other time. The best source you could ever go to and have in times like these is your Bible. And so one of the things that, that uh, I wanted you to know, and Chris talks about this later, maybe we'll hit this in part two, is that this X factor and all the other areas that we talked about, whether it be government, economy, whatever, God's going to clean this system up, right? right? Um, Yeshua is going to ultimately overtake these systems of the world that have been influenced highly by, by this whole satanic kingdom of this kingdom of darkness. And so he's going to come in and purify the earth and restore it to its original intended Edenic state of beauty, fruitfulness, and shalom. He will do that. He will redeem he will redeem bloodlines, mm -hmm. generation by generation, uh, people group by people group, family by family, person by person. He will do it. We need to know that because if not, we'll get stuck thinking that there's some other storyline being written, right? And it's not. You cannot write a story that is outside of the content and context of the story he's already written. There is no story happening outside of this narrative. Everything else is happening inside of this narrative, regardless of what the world may want you to think. So there's a couple of last things we want to talk about. So, so what in the world is going on? <laughs> It's the question you probably are asking, right? We're asking, what the world is going on? Could we possibly be in what I've been calling a test environment? A te yeah. And I know that's a horrible thing. You're like, yeah. you're like, oh, is this a test environment? People are dying right, right. now. This ain't, this ain't no test. This is real. It's a real test. Right. Right. Um, it's a readiness assessment. It's designed to evaluate the participants. And, and we're evaluating our level of preparedness. And, 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 and so it's really important that you know whether or not you and your family are indeed prepared to live in the end times, in the last days, to where this toxic level of narcissism has infiltrated and permeated our world trying to transcend the most important aspect of our world, and that is God, right? Nothing, nothing is more beautiful. Nothing is better than him, his love, his faithfulness, mercy, truth. So, Chris, you talked about the, the test environment. This is an assimilation of the end time yes. environment. This is an assimilation. So, what... What do you mean when you say this could be, we could be in test mode? This could actually be a test. What What are you looking at that says to you, this is this is not that. This is, right now, this is preparation for that. Right. Well, I would say because everything is not in place yet. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, you talked about this earlier as it relates to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And, you know, I, I hate to say, but that is a good picture, yes. and we always go back to it because the scripture says when you came to our church, you talked so eloquently about the aspect of the example that was laid down before mm -hmm. we get to where we are today, mm -hmm. and we learn from those examples, exactly. and so God has already given us examples. Now, watch this. Now, he said what children of Israel experienced in the wilderness mm -hmm. was an example. Yes. It was a test. Yes. Okay. And people were really losing their lives. That's correct. And he was letting us know, your day is coming, mm -hmm. so learn from what they experienced. Absolutely. So here we mm -hmm. are in our day and time right now, and we're saying, and I'm saying to you, I don't, look, 
the Lord told me that we don't have 40 years. Yes. The, you know, when Yahshua prophesied and say, hey, Jerusalem is going to be surrounded and it's going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. That was within a 40 year time, mm -hmm. time frame. So uh, we don't have the time frame it, because if there would be no flesh left alive. Right. That's what the scripture says. Right. You know, there is there are some things that are that are still for to come. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn from this experience how to deal with trouble, trials, That's tests, correct. tribulations. That's correct. And, and and this is a good test run. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. we are not. I want to look at you. We are not slighting that people are dying. That's right. And even though we know people die every day, mm -hmm. okay, they die from something. But still, that doesn't mean we kind of lighten because people are dying without the Lord. People are dying, you know, um, not having a relationship with God. And so that's that's a hard thing. And, and, and it's precious. The, the soul that dies is precious to the Lord. Yes. You know, the Lord waited 120 years for the repenting of the people in Noah's day. Mm -hmm. He's long suffering that none should perish. Right. That we all should come to a tissue bob, mm -hmm. that we all should repent, repent. Mm -hmm. And so with this test run, we should be learning that we don't need sports. Yeah. This is the things that yes. we should be learning. We should learn now how to better budget our money. Right. We should learn now that we don't have a job, how can I create food? You know, just, just some natural things, right. you know, natural things that you can do even with the spiritual things. How's my faith holding up right mm -hmm. now? Am I able to press? Do I, am I poised? Yes. You know, am I, am I, in my mind, am I sane? Do I got a sound mind? Mm -hmm. You know, if things really, really hit the fans, because they're really going to hit the fan right. one day, right. how am I going to cope? Did I Am I teaching my children now they're at home with me? Mm -hmm. How am I doing with my wife? Mm -hmm. How am I doing with my, my children, mm -hmm. you know? So all these things that we should be learning and, and really uh, uh, training, you know, one of the things that you said, too, uh, in our conversation about uh, Iraq, Yes. That before they went to Iraq, they had to go through training. Kuwait, yes. All right. Um, uh, that's right, Kuwait. Mm -hmm. So they had to go through a, a training process uh, to get there. And so uh, with that being said, uh, they, they, had, they had real assimilations. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, didn't nobody die right. in that process, but we're just using that as a springboard mm -hmm. to what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Before we really get into battle, God wants to know, Who's going to stay strong? Who's going to get weak? Matter of fact, I say this, y'all, with all humility. There's going to be people who will pass away before that time because you will not be able to endure. Absolutely. So, Isaiah, I believe this is Isaiah. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it's Isaiah 57. Uh, if I can just look that up real quick, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's Isaiah 57, uh, verse 1. And it reads... Um, that we don't take it to heart or we don't consider why do the righteous perish. Yes. And and watch this. It says, Isaiah 57, 1, it says, the righteous perish and no man lay it to heart and merciful men are taken away. None considered that the righteous are taken out of the way or out away, uh, taken away from the evil mm. to come. Mm. So some people are are going to leave earth right. because of the time to come. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to be here mm -hmm. to deal with the times to right. come because there will be people that are still crying out in Babylon yes. who need to be saved. Yes. That God is going to leave to deal with. And now, I'm not talking about the rapture. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm saying people are going to be taken away because they have passed away. Yes. I'm not talking about rapture, you know, that's a whole nother subject sure. within itself sure. that that's what I talk about in, in the other one that uh, with the other topic that that I want to get into not tonight mm -hmm. what strategic end time strategies yes. to make sure we make it to the promised yes. land to, to the yes. millennial kingdom because yes. this is where we're going now yes. so we're, we're going to go through the wilderness aspect again but there are some things, and one of those things is being offended because you you thought God was going to do this, mm -hmm. but yet he did this. Right. Or you thought he was going to allow this, 
but he allowed that. Right. And so we get offended because we felt like God may have forsaken me or God left me. Or, no, he didn't, he didn't leave you. He didn't forsake you. Right. He'll never do that. Right. Uh, but again, some, sometimes I had to thank God. I really did. I had to thank God. And I say, you know what? You must really trust me to be living at this time. Mm. And so when you start changing your mindset yes. Yes. of the times, yes. and then God said, okay, let me watch him a little longer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay attention to her. Right. You know, depending on what you're saying, what yes. you're doing, and as you said, making tissue bars, mm -hmm. you in the presence of God, mm -hmm. you de you develop and culture culturing yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I talked about, you know, we talked about culturing our gifts, you mm -hmm. know, cultivating our Cultivate, gifts. Yeah. But you need to cultivate your relationship with God. You need mm -hmm. to cultivate, cut some things off, things that you and uh, Bill has been talking mm -hmm. about, uh, uh, circumcising the flesh, yes. you know, a global circumcision. Yes. Yes. Uh, so many things are happening, you all, that we need to get prepared for. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so this is a dress rehearsal, but yes, yes. It's, I mean, it's a live one. Yes. Lives are on the ground, but at the same time, get prepared because greater than this is coming. But you can be ready for it, and that's what we—that's why we're sharing the narrative. So if you know, and if, this is why people are fearful. Mm -hmm. People are fearful, and one of the things that Yahshua said He came for, mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter two, verse fourteen <laughs> and fifteen, He said, "I came to deal with right. the devil right. who had power mm -hmm. over death." And people were put in bondage yes. because of fear of death. Yes. And this is the narrative that's yes. playing out right now in the sense of trying to put fear in our hearts. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're afraid people are dying. Right. And right. if he can get you to submit to that, mm -hmm. then he has crowned. Corona mm -hmm. is now king. Mm -hmm. All right. He's ruling. That spirit behind Corona mm -hmm. is the spirit of death. And I'm... Yeah. Um, I know that's yeah, another yeah, yeah, yeah. topic. We'll yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, I want to stop, Chris, because we got so much. Yeah. To, we got so much we want to cover with you guys, and we're out of time. We want. We only really want to spend an hour just going over mm -hmm. this with you because we we really want to ask answer this question. So, what in the world is going on? And we're going to continue to answer this question for you. Here's some things I want you to think about. I want you to evaluate where you are. That's what this time is about. That's what a readiness assessment is. It's a test to examine where you are. What's going on in your body? What is your mind doing right now? What's going on in your heart? What's your, uh, what's your blood pressure like? What, mm -hmm. what is your system mm -hmm. doing? Um, has your system come online with heaven? Or are you still locked into this world and your thoughts process and your behavior and your, and your connections are limited to this world? If so, that's gonna, this, the world is going to become a scary place for you. Um, here's something else I want you to consider. Uh, Chris and I are going to come back and we're going to, we're going to have some more discussions with you on a part two and maybe get into describing, uh, what he meant by, he, he touched a little bit about the spirit of Corona and his goal to dethrone the church. We'll look at that the next time we talk. But what I want to, what I want you to think about right now is, um, is the narrative, right? And how God has taken the narrative and placed it inside or place the the revelation of that narrative and the trumpet is sounding in that narrative through the seven festival the seven moedim of the lord um we just came out of pesach or mm -hmm. passover and unleavened bread and those were very instrumental in preparing us for next stage things for next level things that will happen in the earth so you have Passover, you have unleavened bread, you have first fruit, the waving of the sheaves from the first harvest or the, from the first of the harvest. And then we go into, uh, so there's seven and we'll, we'll, just, we'll just give them, but we won't talk about them here tonight. So you have Passover, you have unleavened bread and the first fruits. We start counting the Omar though, right? Mm -hmm. So we're preparing, there is, an, there is a, a momentum taking place. We're building, we're, we're growing and developing, we're shedding. We're, re we're unleavening and we're unburning ourselves and detoxing as we prepare to be re-leavened at Shaviot, at the day of Pentecost. So God picks up the pace at each one of these mm -hmm. locations, at each one of these, I hate to say location, but each one of these stages that are represented in the Moedim, in the, in the consecrated, dedicated time that we are to rehearse and spend in his presence. 
He's preparing us for the ultimate day of Sukkot. But we have to go through these protocols in order to get there. And so each season has within it even its own protocol of response. And then we we head out of out of um, out of uh, Shaviot, out of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, and we head into some of the most challenging, some of the most mm -hmm. exciting, some of the most frightening, some of the most difficult, some of the most joyous, some of the most unhappy <laughs> times in the earth, and that it starts with uh, Yom Teruah or Yom Teruah. The blowing of sounding, the, the, the shouting, the loud trumpet blast starts and it prepares us. Yes. Can I? Can yes. I, yeah. Let me just insert real quick mm -hmm. since he's mentioning that. I want to say something to you all. And this is the last thing I'm going to say for this evening. A lot of what we're seeing, what I'm about to say is going to shock you. But it's in the word. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we're seeing is the prayers of the saints firstering up. Mm -hmm. In other words, the troubles and the trials and the tests, and you might be like, how in the world is my prayer provoking mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. You need to read Revelation <laughs> chapter 8 mm -hmm. because after the prayers of the saints, God releases those prayers right. into the earth right. and you have earthquake, lightnings, thunders, and voices and you start seeing a crescendo of things mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. And they are not good for people who are on the earth. Right. All right. Especially if they're not in connection to Messiah and they're mm -hmm. not, they have not been sealed having God's name. Right. Um, so a lot of what we are seeing mm -hmm. is the manifestation of prayers that we prayed. That's the <laughs> Asking God's That's mercy true. and justice in the earth. Mm -hmm. And so, but in that process is that redemption that yeah. comes through allowing these entities and these people who are uh, behind the scenes, yes. who are under the sway of darkness mm -hmm. to come forth, believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. There's another thing that the Lord had to talk to me about. Mm -hmm. And you know, y'all been praying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh? Y'all yeah. yeah, been yeah. praying. You wanting me to, re to you know, establish the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Here's the narrative. Here's the process. Yes. This is what you're praying about. When yes. you said, let thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. that will be done. Mm -hmm. It ain't just, just for the spare of the moment. Mm -hmm. But this is the whole process that's going to be worked out to where now the kingdom of God is on the earth Absolutely. in a physical, spiritual manifestation. Absolutely. It's in the bowls, right? Your, prayer, your prayers are in the bowls mm -hmm. and they're going. And those bowls are going to fill and they're going to be released into the earth. It's already happening. Um, and so, and so when we, when we finish Yom Kippur, we're heading into Sukkot. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is staging everything that you see in the earth. The narrative is in the seven major feasts of, of, of the Lord. So don't, don't miss us coming back. We know we were, we were long winded. We're probably going to be next time too. So if you come back on, just get settled in, do what we do. Get your, get your tea, bring everything you need around you. Uh, water, get comfortable no because cares. guys, mm -hmm. we have a little time to talk right. about a lot of things right? and everything that I believe God's releasing, not just through the two of us, but what he's releasing across the world and so many different people that are coming forth right now. We need to get all that out. And here's another thing. Don't be afraid of what Amen. we say, right? Amen. Because God, at the Amen. end of this, God is the victor and we are a part of that victory. And we will take those victory laps around the world with him as Amen. he shows the world who Amen. he is and who we are. I will say this. We're trying to use as much Facebook time as we possibly can because we don't know That's right. when this will not That's be right. available. That's right. So when we come on, yeah, we may spend an hour, 35, 45 minutes. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because we have a little time to get as much wisdom and information to you to help guide your process so that you are prepared Mm -hmm. when these things unfold and manifest themselves. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Again, um, join us in part two. We have some other things that we want to share with you, and we hope that we can get you to the place to where you and your family are prepared to answer the question for other people. So what in the world <laughs> is going on? God bless. Amen. God bless. Mm -hmm.